Hey guys, Mike Builds. Welcome back. In this quick video, I kind of wanted to go over some of the updates and the progress of our 40 volt off grid solar power system. It is the beginning of 2026, so I figured it'd be a good time to make an update video, show you guys some of the changes that I've made to our system, and kind of explain how the system has been working and running so far in these winter months in Texas. So starting off, we have been completely off grid. My house has been completely powered by the Flexboss 21. We've had zero issues with that at all. No outages, no times where we lost power, nothing like that. It's been completely flawless and honestly, I'm super happy with how it's turned out so far. The inverter has proven to be very reliable. The biggest load I've ran on it so far that I've seen was 11 and a half thousand watts of output and the inverter handled that no problem. And that was with the dryer running and with my water heater running. Now, since then I've actually upgraded my water heater to a heat pump style water heater. So now the highest draw I've seen is about 8,000 watts. The heat pump water heater really helps because it cuts down on the instantaneous uses that we're gonna see because we're not powering you know, 5,000 watts worth of heating elements. We're only powering a small air conditioner essentially to heat the water. So that's kind of a cool upgrade that we did more or less behind the scenes, but it is gonna help overall with us having to save power. I also did kind of sort of reorganize our system. We've been reviewing a lot of different batteries on the channel and I have a bunch more reviews to release. So you're gonna see some batteries here that I haven't really shown on the channel yet, but there will be videos on those, trust me. So this is kind of how I have everything laid out. This is about as clean as I can make it as far as right now, but the system is always changing. I'm always coming up with different ways to mount components and switch things up and just kind of make the setup a little bit cleaner. We also did add two more charge controllers because I have two separate arrays that are a little bit too small for the Flex Boss to handle. The Flex Boss really needs big arrays. If you try to hook smaller arrays to this and the voltage is below 200 volts, the Flex Boss doesn't like that. It needs to see at least 200 volts or higher. I'd say minimum 250 volts for this thing to really start making some good power. So I have only bigger arrays connected to this and I was able to tie in some smaller arrays. And even these smaller arrays, this one's making 500 watts right now. This one's making 330, but the sun isn't completely on those panels yet. As far as batteries, we're running two golf cart batteries here, two different server rack batteries here. I did videos on both of these and I really liked both of them, especially the watt cycle one. This thing did really amazing in all our testing. It was a good budget battery and the build quality was probably some of the best that I've seen on a budget battery so far. We have the eco-worthy batteries. These were put in service last year, I believe November of 2024, and they've been flawless. The only thing I don't like about using Using the four separate 12 volt batteries is you do have to use an equalizer and I've had kind of good luck and bad luck with those equalizers but this one has been on this pack now for over a year and I haven't had any issues but I haven't actually sat down and actually went and rechecked all the batteries to see if they're staying balanced or not but it seems to be working so far so good on the bottom here we have the EG4 LL server rack batteries these are also about two years old and they're just chilling here no issues out of those have been rock solid we have a Yijing DIY battery we did a video on that's a 314 amp hour battery that thing's also been very reliable. Two more budget server rack batteries that we reviewed. Both of those did really good as well and the build quality was really nice. I have some new batteries right here. These are Heimseek wall mount batteries. So it's a lot like the server rack battery that we reviewed, except the cells are a different brand and it actually has a screen. I do have a review on this battery coming out here very shortly. Right now, these aren't even in stock. So once these become available, I'm gonna post the video so you guys can take a look at that but these batteries also test it out pretty good. And they're also a good budget alternative if you're looking for a different style of 48 volt battery. And last but not least, I have four different 300 amp hour batteries right here in series. So that's another 48 volt, 300 amps worth of batteries, 300 amp hours worth of batteries. Once again, not ideal to mix brands, but we did it because we had them. They have equalizers on them right here and it seems to be working just fine keeping them balanced. And then down here we have our DIY Calb CA180 cell built batteries. There's two 16S packs stacked on top of each other, both in parallel. Each pack is 16S, 180 amp hours. We did a full build series on those. So if you're interested in DIY battery builds, please check out my channel for those builds. They have JK BMSs and they're built pretty, I would say reliably. All the cells we use were brand new. I got them on Facebook market from some guy. He had a whole pallet, so it was a very nice build. And these have been also very reliable, no issues there. And then last but not least in this corner, we have this 105 amp hour watt cycle golf cart battery. This thing's also been functioning just fine with this little display right there. We have a ton of capacity in the system. So as far as total capacity that we have sitting here, we have about 110.5 kilowatt hours of capacity. I use an average of about 20 to 30 kilowatt hours a day. Now, if we're doing laundry, running the dryer a lot and having to charge the electric car, that usage can go up to about 40 to 50 kilowatt hours. So on average, this battery bank should power my house for anywhere between 
you know, two, two and a half days all the way up to, you know, five days. I, I could probably stretch it to a week if I really needed to. And that's assuming that we're not having any way to charge it. You know, no sun, no solar, no generator, no nothing. So it is quite a bit of capacity. Now I do also have this EG4 314 amp hour indoor wall battery that I just did a video on. So if you guys watched that video, thank you so much for watching that. Currently on this power cart that we're also doing some testing on, I got one of these 12,000 XP inverters by EG4 and I wanted to build a power cart in order to kind of put this thing through some testing and show off and demonstrate a lot of the features that the inverter has. So just for right now, we have another full blown power cart right here. And this has enough power to power the entire house as well, just on its own, which is pretty cool. Obviously you want more capacity if you plan on doing that for a long term, but it is amazing that you can build a system this small that has as much power as this does. So there is gonna be a video of this cart coming out pretty soon, mainly showing off the features of the 12K XP powering a bunch of big loads. And I'm also gonna show you guys how I kind of put this cart together. So once I'm done kind of messing with this cart, I am gonna tie this battery into our system and that'll bring our total capacity up to about 126 kilowatt hours. As far as how much power we've actually generated with the Flex Boss, I did actually add the screen as well. And so far, I don't know how good this is gonna show up on the camera. We've generated 1,376 kilowatt hours and we've used almost 1,800. There is a deficit and that deficit I had to make up with generator charging as well as grid charging, mainly because we're in the winter months of Texas and my solar array was kind of undersized for a little while. But right now we're putting 2.7 kilowatts in the batteries and that's 2.7 plus the other two smaller charge controllers. So that's what we're putting total into the batteries. Now, some people have had problems cooling the Flex Boss 21 because the fans on this thing don't like to kick on until you're running above 6,000 watt load. So what I did just to keep the inverter a little bit cooler and keep it a little bit happier for long-term use is I added four computer fans right here. They're kind of just wedged up in here and glued onto the wood with hot glue. I know it's a little bit janky, but it works just fine. And then I also added a fan speed controller right here so I can turn these fans down. These are knocked to a fan, so they're extremely quiet and I can have a little bit extra cooling on the inverter and it really doesn't add much noise. As far as solar panels, I did make a couple small changes. We did build this solar pergola, which I did a video on, but what I didn't show yet is we actually extended this all the way to the end of the house. So we have nine more 400 watt solar panels up here. Now, unfortunately, the bad part about these being so close to the house is the sun is so low in the sky this time of year, the house actually casts a shadow on these panels pretty bad. So they really aren't making a ton of power, but it's a little bit unfortunate. It's almost kind of a waste, but during the summer, these will make a ton of power. And we're running the Hyperion 400 watt panels. We got these off Signature Solar. They were some of the cheapest panels you could buy at the time. That's a panel right now I'm doing some testing on. This is our OG carport. These are using the Canadian Solar 390 watt panels. This thing's been up for a few years now and it's been working solid. So that's our main workhorse where most of our output comes out of. And just recently, I built this array right here out of scrap two by fours. So what we have here is seven more of the Hyperion 400 watt panels. We could really only fit seven, but even this array with only seven of these makes pretty good power. I wanna say this makes close to 2000 watts so far. Once again, these are not mounted efficiently. There's not enough angle on these for the time of year. We really need a lot more angle, especially for the winter. Now these panels you see here on the ground are actually hooked up to one of the smaller charge controllers that I showed you guys. And these right here make about five to 600 watts. So not a ton, but a lot of these panels are either very small or very old. So we don't get a lot of output out of those, unfortunately. And then the remainder of our panels are on top of this little pergola deal over some plants. There's the remainder three. I buy the Hyperion panels in groups of 10. So seven are against the fence, the other three are up there. And then for backup power, we have this Harbor Freight Predator 11,500 watt inverter generator. And this is connected to a charge verter and we're able to charge the batteries with 5,000 watts of power, which this generator can easily provide and also be somewhat fuel efficient. So this is kind of gonna be our backup plan B when we have severe weather or there's just no sun and the batteries need to be charged and we don't wanna actually charge from the grid. That's gonna do it for the update guys. Just wanted to show you all the changes that we've made to the system. And I, like I said, everything has been working amazing. Everything's been working about as good as I can ask, we've had no hiccups. Now, could this be better? Yes, absolutely 100%, but try to understand because I'm always testing different batteries and reviewing different stuff, this setup is always changing. So as much as I'd love to build a nicer rack and have all these batteries a lot more lined up and a lot more cleaned up, the fact is I'm still making a lot of changes to the system as it grows and changes over time. So this for me works amazing. I know a lot of people ask a lot of questions about mixing different batteries. As long as they're in parallel, as long as the chemistry is the same and the cell count's the same, you really shouldn't have any issues. Now, if you cycle your battery really, really low or you don't top balance the entire pack for a really long time, 
the state of chargers can kind of sort of wander, but I do plan on doing a video of that later in the future where we're gonna take four different server rack batteries. I'm gonna show you guys that I'm putting them in parallel and we're gonna use them as one battery. And I'm gonna show you guys how the performance of the battery is affected based on state of charge. Cause I do get a lot of questions about that. And a lot of you guys out there, I think are unsure if it's safe or not, or if it's best practices or not. Personally, it's worked fine for me. I've had no issues. You just gotta be smart, make sure the voltages match, make sure the chemistries match, and you will not have any issues. That's gonna do it for this video. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. I do my best to respond to all the questions and I do my best to try to provide you guys with helpful, useful real world advice for y'all setups as well. So leave any thoughts, questions, concerns, ideas, anything, leave all in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys think about what we've done so far. Very happy to be in 2026. We made it this far and I'm excited to see what this year takes us for the YouTube channel as a whole. At the time of making this video, I think we're at 12,000 subscribers. So thank y'all so much for subscribing and watching my channel, watching the videos. It really means a lot to me. Can't wait to see what we can accomplish this year. So that's it. See you in the next video.